All right, review for the quiz. Key. All right, number one, name the vector and write its component form. Okay, so when we name this vector, it is pretty much what it looks like. We write it as array. So it's starting at A, going towards B, and we put the arrow this way. The vector, how does it get from A to B? Well, we always go X, Y. Okay, so one, two, three, four spots right, so that's positive, and then up is positive, one, two, three, four. Now we put a comma, but instead of putting parentheses like a point, we do these little inequality signs, or if you think about them, they're like sideways Vs for vector. Okay, we're going to make a change here. Uh, Q at 0, 4, and I notice these are going by 2, so 2, 4, 6, 8, or negative 2, so forth. So 0, 4, we're going to put Q. Negative 4, negative 2, so that's negative 4 down one spot, because remember it's counting by 2s. Then we're going to make this uh, see yeah two negative four it doesn't work with the, the way it is there so we're gonna go two negative four that's gonna be right here and then six negative two all right and there is our shape right here all right so just one change to make that two negative four and then we're going to move it left Two and up four. That's what this means. X minus two, Y plus four. This would look like this in the other form. It all means the same thing. I want you to kind of catch what's going on. Now, there's two ways to do this. We can literally just go. Why is that moving? One. Now remember, this is two. So one spot is actually two. And then four would be two spots, like so. You gotta remember you're counting by twos. It's a tricky part here. All right. So we're not gonna we're not gonna go one, two, one, two, three, four, because that would be way too much. We're counting by twos. So here's two, two, four. That's where it's gonna end up. Now you can do that for each point. So I could starting at well, let's let's put the letters on there. Sorry. Here's Q. And nope, that's Q right here. And then R is at negative 4, negative 2. That's the one I mislabeled. Sorry about that. S, we move down here. And T is over here. Now, I could move R by just going 2, 2, 4, and put R prime right here. That's one way to do it, by literally just moving the spot. The mathematical way is to take this point and do 0 minus 2, because that's what we're doing here and 4 plus 4, and the new point will be right there. So negative 4 minus 2 will be negative 6, and negative 2 plus 4 will be positive 2. 2 minus 2 will be 0, negative 4 plus 4 will be 0, and then 6 minus 2 is 4, and negative 2 plus 4, again, is going to be 2. So that's two different ways to do it, okay? If you notice, where do we put R prime? At negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, positive 2. And that's what we have right here doing it mathematically. It's whatever you're comfortable with. So Q, again, Q prime is going to be at negative 2, 8. Or you go 2 and up 4. It's whatever works for you. So here's Q prime. S prime is going to be at 0, 0. And T prime is going to be at 4, 2. Now notice, the important thing about this is, this shape, except for poor drawing, is the same shape. It's the same size. It's just in a different location. OK? One of the biggest mistakes is when people do different transformations is, you know, like if you're sliding it like so, making it, you know, do something else, like become a different shape 
are distorted. It should look exactly the same, just in a different spot. Moving on. Find the component form of the vector that translate 4, 5, P, whoops, P at 4, 5 to P prime. So all we're doing here is we're doing the math on this. So we're going to do 4 minus 1, which is 3, and 5 plus 3, which is 8. Actually, never mind. I lied. <clears throat> that is a point, not a vector. And the reason I noticed that, and again, I just was being careless, notice how this is a point, not a vector. It doesn't have those symbols. So what it's asking is, how did I get from 4 to negative 1? Okay? So how did I get from 4 to negative 1? Well, basically you're saying 4 plus plus x equals negative 1. Well, if I subtract 4 from both sides, that would be negative 5. So if I do 4 minus 5, that gives me negative 1. And 3, well, 3 plus y equals 3. That would be 0. Sorry. It should have been 5 plus y. My brain is not working this morning. 5 plus y. So now I subtract 5, I get negative 2. So how did I get from 4, 5, negative 1, 3? I did 4 minus 5 to give me negative 1, and 5 minus 2 to get to 3. All right? Number four, how did I get from four to four? Well, nothing changed. How did I get from five to negative two? Now, you can also just kind of think about it on a graph. If I'm up here at five and I want to go down to negative two, well, it's obviously five spots here and it's two spots here. That means I moved seven spots and I moved down, so that's negative seven. And I could check five minus seven is negative two. Otherwise, you can also just do the math, all right? 5 plus what gives me negative 2? Well, if I minus 5 minus 5, that gives me negative 7. So there's two ways to do it. You can think of it graphically or do it algebraically. Okay, now we're doing a reflection. So we're going to put negative 2, negative 2. Now, these are, notice these are counting by 1s. We only have twos on here, but it's, you know, two spots. So negative two, negative two is down here. Two, four is up here. And one negative two, we have a one here. Negative two is right here. So we have a triangle. And that's A, B, C. Now, we're going to fold it across the y-axis. Where's the y-axis? Right here. So all I'm going to do is count A is two spots away, this to the left. So I'm going to go two spots to the right. So that's A prime. B is two spots to the right. So it's going to go two spots to the left. And C is one spot to the right, so I'm going to go one spot to the left. And this is why we use a straight edge, so it doesn't look that bad. But if you can see, if you can imagine, if you fold it over the pink line, the B's would touch, the A's would touch, and the C's would touch. Okay? Now, remember, on the little sheet, the cheat sheet we're giving you, that also has the, uh, a shortcut to do these transformations also. So whatever's best for you. All right, y equals x. Now remember, y equals x is this kind of funky line that goes diagonally like so. Okay? So negative 4, 0 is right here. Negative 3 
positive 6 is up here. And negative 2, negative 2 is right on the line. That's important. Because remember, anytime one of our dots is on the line, whatever line we're folding it over, it will stay there. Okay? So here's D, here's E, and here's F, which will also be F prime. And basically what happens on the shortcut is we just switch them. So negative 4, 0 becomes 0, negative 4. So here's my D prime. Negative 3, 6 becomes 6, negative 3. That's my E prime. And my F prime is that same spot. So again, if you can imagine folding it over that pink line, the E's match up, the D's match up, and obviously the F does, because it's the same point. All right, try and draw all the lines of symmetry, if any, for each figure. Well, if we fold right down the middle, left to right, it'll match up. And that's the only way it will go. Diagonally won't line up. Horizontally, it'll be bigger on the top, smaller on the bottom. Okay? Bob. Okay? So, for a capital B, it's going to be like so. All right? For the O, it's going to be straight down the middle like this, left to right. Now, depending on how you look at it, you might say, you know, it'll fold top to bottom. Okay? And it looks like that will work. All right? Depends on how it's drawn, but that will work top to bottom and horizontal and vertical. And then B, we already know, is that way, top to bottom. And that's the only way to make it work. All right? With this... Kind of shape here, have a robot head. We can fold it left to right and top to bottom. W, unlike the B, will be left to, left to right fold. The O we already talked about can go this way and this way. And W, left to right. Okay, graph JKL. So J is at 1, 1. K is at negative 3, positive 4. And L is at negative 4, positive 2. So we have J, K, L. Now, we're doing a composition here. We're doing two things, 1, then 2. So we're going to move it right 1, and down five. Again, you have two choices here. You can add one and subtract five, or you can literally just count from J, right one and down five. One, two, three, four, five. That'll be at two, negative four. which is what we have here, 2, negative 4. Either way, whatever works for you. So K, I'm just going to count 1 right and down 1, 2, 3, 4. And L, down right 1 and down 1, 2, 3, 4. Now remember, this is my new drawing. So this is K prime, L prime, and J prime. Now for this reflection, I'm going to reflect the red figure. And I'm going to fold it over y equals 1. Well, where is that? y equals 1, that's a horizontal line at 1. So I'm going to fold it over this line. All right? So what's going to happen here? I'm going to count each point from that line. So let's look at L because it's closest. L is one spot below, so it's going to go right here one spot above. That's going to be L double prime. K is one, two, three spots below. So it's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three spots above. And it's actually going to end up on that point. J is one, two, three, four, five below. One, two, three, four, five above. 
and that will be J double prime. Got L double prime, and here is K. I'm oh, sorry. But yeah, that up here is K double prime. And then that goes right there. Now remember, pay attention. You are not always going to fold over the axes. So you got to pay attention, and I think it helps to draw in the reflection line. That's my personal choice. All right, graph the polygon's image after rotation of the given number of degrees. And we are going to go counterclockwise, like we've been doing. Okay, counterclockwise. So, again, you're going to have the chart, but remember, <clears throat> remember for a 90-degree turn, all right, we go from having x, y to negative y, x. So we switch them and then flip the sign. So, for point C, we had 0, 4. 0, 4, we're going to move the 4 to the x spot and make it negative. So negative 4, 0. That's going to be C prime. Negative 3, 1. That's going to become negative 1, negative 3. That's going to be B prime. And A prime can become negative 1, positive 2. Now remember, with 90 degrees, it's going to rotate counterclockwise into the next quadrant. So this point went one quadrant this way. C, which was on the y-axis, ends up going to the x-axis here. And A, which was in quadrant 1, rotates to quadrant 2. Now at 270, remember, it's going to go three quadrants. So D, if we plan ahead, is going to go from the second quadrant, 90, 180, it should end up there, 270, and so forth. Okay? Now remember, for 270, it's kind of the same thing. X, Y is going to become y negative x. So we switch them again, except the make the other one opposite. All right? So for negative 3, 2, we switch them. But then the 3 is going to become positive. So that's going to be 2, positive 3. Well, looky there. That's right where we predicted it would end up. All right? E, where is it going to end up? One, two, three. It should end up up here somewhere. So negative three, negative three. I switch them, and this is going to become opposite. So negative three, positive three. And that's right where we said it should end up. E prime. G, down in the fourth quadrant, should go one, two. It should end up down here. So I switch them, negative 1, negative 1, and that's where it ends up, G prime. And F finally should end up down here. So 1, negative 1, which is going to line up right here and become F prime. And that makes sense because this is two spaces apart. And F and G were two spaces apart over there. This is the same shape, same size, just rotated. 270 degrees. And that's it.